Hi guys! <laughs> no one's here. <laughs> it's me, Brittany LaPage, the Dahlia darling. Um, guess what time it is? Guess what time it is? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's Dahlia seed hybridizing time! Oh my god, I'm so excited. Guys, I've been like, this has been in my brain, it's been an idea, it's been stewing for like a year now, and um, last year was the first time. I didn't think that this year was gonna be the, the time for me to try hybridizing my own dahlias. I knew I wanted to do it eventually, but I, I, I just, I didn't think I was ready for that yet. But then I decided to say, Screw it, let's try. And um, I left, say around mid-August, I started to not deadhead certain um, um, flowers on my plants. I started leaving them, which is like against my nature because I'm always clipping my flowers off when they're, they're at that really nice stage because every time I cut a flower off, it makes the plant produce more shoots. And then you get more flowers. Cutting your flowers is good. Don't ever be like, oh no, I don't want to hurt it. Just cut it, take it, put it on your table, enjoy its beauty. <laughs> Anyways, so I left some, which was against everything I'd been doing. I uh, let them go to seed. It can take quite a few weeks for the, you'll notice as a Dahlia, like open, it'll, um, as it gets older, especially when it starts getting cool out, it will start popping its center and you'll get a yellow center. And that's so that the pollinators and stuff can access it uh, better. And your, that means your plant wants to go to seed. And usually they will try, like they want to start going to seed at the end of the season. So they will start popping their centers even earlier than usual or sooner, right? That flower will go to the, be done and out of that perfect cutting stage and into seed production stage um, or it'll just be like too old right I, I again I try to cut them before they get too old but this time I had to leave them and you had to wait they would get pollinated the petals would fall off and then that open center would will close because it's been pollinated and then um, I don't think I have any more pods left. I think I opened them all up to get the seeds. I did take a video of it elsewhere, but it closes back up and you gotta leave it and uh, the plant will start producing seeds in those pods. And you know when to cut the pod um, when it starts to have like, a, you'll see a black tip where it closed. That usually means that it's ready. I, I can't, remember exactly how long the process takes, but it can take like four to six weeks for this from the flower to like be pollinated and then close up and then for the seeds to be produced. So this was my first time doing that. And I ended up getting way more than I thought. And some dahlias were better at producing seed than others, which I hear is totally normal. Um, and I made sure to write down, like there's different, types of way that you can control the pollination process, but I let the, I let the pollinators do it. Um, I only took full dahlias, like none of the single colorettes or anything. I want, uh, that's like, a a gene I don't really want, which I will see come out on these. Like when you get a dahlia seed, um, you don't know what you're gonna get. You're gonna get like a whole new flower. This is what hybridizing dahlias is. And I'm gonna get tons of different variations that come out from these, these seeds. And my goal is I, I want one, I don't know, if I have 200 seedlings, I'm hoping I get like two or three that are worth keeping and um, dividing the tubers and taking cuttings from and uh, keeping them as second year plants and hopefully in the second year they'll produce the same flower that I like that first year and then I'll know I want to keep it and then I will want to uh, the only way to get that same flower that I like to keep coming back is if I take cuttings or divide tubers if I get seed a seed will be a completely different plant there are 
so many different genetic variations in the Dahlia DNA chromosomes, whatever. Like, you know, that's why Dahlia's have such a huge, like there's such a range of like different uh, colors, sizes, um, forms, uh, cactus, uh, decorative, ball, pom-pom, collarette, water lily, anemone, like there's so many different kinds. Now, the kinds I'm going for are, I guess balls are decorative, decorative? I just keep saying that weird. Um, <laughs> or it sounds weird to me, I don't know. <laughs> so um, I did have one collarette. I was growing uh, a dahlia called Pooh, like Pooh Bear, Winnie the Pooh. Anyways, um, I kept it covered because I didn't want it to be cross-pollinated with any of my other plants. Um, this is Nat G, I got Bride to Be. Uh, Arabian Nights, Red Cactus, Apricot Desire, Hot Shot, Clearview Tilly. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to see what that gives me. <laughs> I'm going to, okay. Um, I didn't control the pollination because I let the bees do whatever they wanted. Um, the dahlias in that patch will be pollinated amongst each other. Um, so I'll know what the one parent plant is, which is where the seed came from Clearview Tilly, but I don't know what the, the other parent is. That's a mystery. But I know what was growing in this patch too. It's, oh, Clearview Tilly is beautiful. It was the most expensive tuber I'd ever bought for $17 uh, three years ago. Um, until this year, I bought peaches and cream tubers for $20 a pop. I bought Oh, it only let me buy two. I bought two. Two. That's an investment. I'm going to grow those things and I'm going to multiply them and $20 a tuber and they were sold out everywhere. And the site that I got them from, um, Dahlia May Farm, she had a two tuber limit. You couldn't buy more than that. I wanted three. And they sold out within six minutes of her opening her site or seven minutes, something like that. And I got two. I got two. <laughs> Sorry guys. Oh my God. I'm slightly competitive. Just a little. Yeah. Anyways, you want to see me? You want to see me start my seeds? There's eight weeks until it's time to plant out. This is the time to plant your seeds for dahlias. Um, anyone who, grew, who got seeds to grow this year. I've never done dahlias from seeds before. I always buy tubers because I want to know what variety I get. I spend money on good quality varieties that are just like like stunners these, these flowers I, I, I buy stunners I mean that's why you would keep that dahlia that variety once you you know grown it from seed because you realize whoa when you see that first flower open this is a stunner I need to keep this I need to make more of these people are gonna love them they're not no name box store tubers that are, or whatever, they're like quality. Anyways, I'm not gonna get into that. <laughs> okay, okay. I've been following advice from Santa Cruz Dahlias and this is what she says to do. This is gonna make a mess. Oh, I know what I'll do. Let's put this underneath. I, I had something else in these Ziploc bags before. I like to reuse as much stuff as possible. I, uh, yeah, there's like, there's too much waste in the world. I'm trying to cut down on that as much as possible. You'd think gardening is something that there wouldn't be, that would be more earth friendly and stuff, but there's a lot of bad, wasteful things when it comes to gardening and they bug me. So I, I try to find alternative ways. I try to reuse as much as possible. Whoa, guys. <gasps> These are my seeds from Clearview Tilly. It's the big white one that I have. There, I, I know I have pictures on my side of them. <gasps> Clearview Tilly. And I don't know how many of these will actually germinate, but oh man, please germinate. <laughs> please give me one. Wow, I actually got quite a few seeds from her. I'm, wow, I'm impressed. 
there one little baby in there? Oh, I think that was just dirt. Okay, clear me, Julie. Always mark your stuff. Um, I should also let you guys know. Um, dahlias, when grown from seed, will produce tubers the same year that they're grown. So, yeah, that's a question that people ask all the time. Like, will I get a tuber at the end of the season? Yes, you'll get tubers. I mean, unless one of these seeds grows and then I find out it's a bad tuber maker, which could be a genetic thing. Like, you know, the good genetic traits you want, good tuber makers, um, strong stems. Like, I, I, do, I cut flowers. That's what I want. If I have weak stems, like, I can't do anything with that. Uh, sometimes the dahlias, the flower head will flop down, too, like weak necks. That's bad, too. I want them to be either straight or kind of up. Um, Cafe Olay does that to me sometimes, and I don't like it. It's so beautiful, but it's, its head goes down. Although a lot of florists will wrap it with wire, uh, the stem, so, and then position the head up. So, I mean, if it's a, an incredibly beautiful dahlia, like Cafe Olay, you can make exceptions. <laughs> find, find a way, make it happen, make it work. And then it'll become the most popular wedding flower on the market. That costs money. Sorry. Ugh. Clear view jelly. Okay, how should I do this? I'm gonna put this in here. Actually, ooh, I'll pop it out a bit so I can see it. Perfect. All right, I got clear view jelly. I'll put her in here. And then I'm just gonna keep going. And I'm gonna use half this time. Um, yeah, there's eight weeks. I have eight weeks. Eight weeks till May, long weekend, when I can plant my stuff out in Zone 5B, Ottawa. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. It's going to be awesome. Oh my gosh. And oh, all my tubers that I ordered this year are going to be coming in the next couple of weeks. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have so many more. I got to get, I got to get my plants outside like now, like, like, yeah. <laughs> um, I have like snapdragons and delphiniums and like a ton of seedlings and they're, I don't have any room in any of my windows. Um, my sunroom is full. I just got a new little tiny greenhouse with a protection cover. Um, just a pop-up four shelf one I'm going to put outside on my deck. Um... But I need to make room. I need to start getting things in the ground. I need to start making beds. I'm gonna put covers over top of them. Oh, wish me luck. It's gonna be a busy, a busy couple months, but uh, oh my gosh, it's gonna be worth it. It's gonna be worth it. I can't wait. I can't wait to see what my seeds create. Oh, these like, these are definitely mystery dahlias. I've mentioned mystery dahlias, you know, the ones that you forget to label or something happens and you don't know what it is, but it's growing and you have to wait till some, I don't know, August when it has its first flower to be like, oh, now I know what you are. But before that, it's a mystery dahlia and it's a surprise when you see what it is. These, this is like, I don't know how many seeds I got, but I keep saying 200, it's like 200 mystery, mystery dahlias. I don't even know like what they could be because they could be anything. Anyways, I'm excited. I will uh, track all my progress as I go, guys. So throughout the year as they're growing, as they first start flowering, I will share all of this with you. This is a new Dahlia hybridizing adventure. So follow me, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like me, and like... Come along for the ride. <laughs> Thanks, guys.